Hi, my name is Ilma and I welcome you to my channel if this is your first time. Uh, I have been posting uh, devotionals for nine years every day. So today I'd like to share with you Colossians 4 verses 12 to 14. And here's the word of God. Epaphras, who is one of your own, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, sends you his greetings always striving earnestly for you in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. For I testify for him that he has a deep concern for you and for those who are in Laodicea and Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, sends you his greetings, and Demas does also. Colossians 4, 12 to 14. Here's my devotional. Epaphras, the earnest bondservant of Christ. Bible Gateway describes Epaphras as a man who was a giant in prayer and as Paul's fellow servant and, and servant, his fellow prisoner and a faithful minister. He was also Paul's representative of Colossae, where he had founded a church that is uh, mentioned in Colossians 1 verse 7 and sought under Paul's advice to combat prevalent heresies there. The apostle had affection for Epaphras, who ministered unto his need and the need of others. In this uh, translation, he was referred to as a bond servant. According to GodQuestions.com, a bond servant is a slave. In some Bibles, the word bond servant is the translation of the Greek word doulos which means one who is subservient to. <clears throat> Excuse me. And entirely at the disposal of his master or a slave. In Roman times, the term bond servant or slave could refer to someone who voluntarily served others, but it usually referred to one who was held in a permanent position of servitude. Under Roman law, a bond servant was considered the owner's personal property. Slaves essentially had no rights and could even be killed by impunity by their own owners. The Hebrew word for bond servant, which is ebed, had a similar connotation. Guzik comments that Paul called Epaphras a bond servant of Christ, using a phrase that he often applied to himself but never to anyone else except here and in Philippians 1 verse 1, where he speaks of himself and Timothy together as bond servants of Jesus. Vaughn says that Epaphras was a bond servant and prayer was an important area where he worked hard. Laboring fervently is a free translation of E.K. Paulin Ponon, a phrase, the key word of which Ponon suggests heavy toil to the extent of pain. Paul commends Epaphras in this letter to the Colossian believers how blessed they are for having a minister who prays earnestly for their maturity and full assurance in Jesus Christ. He testifies to the deep concern that Epaphras have for his flock and those who are in Laodicea and Hierapolis. He also mentions greetings from Luke, the physician, and Demas. Reflection. Why should all true believers consider themselves as bond servants of Christ? And how different is it to be a servant of Christ than of the world or any man? <clears throat> if you are a true believer, you have become a servant of Christ. It's interesting how a lot of Christians don't... Um, want to even think about them being a slave of Christ. But in essence, that is what it means to be a disciple, to, be, uh, to, to commit to Christ, to be a Christian, to be a believer, to be a servant or a slave to Jesus. And when you do not consider yourselves a slave, if you claim you're a Christian and you do not consider yourself as a slave to Christ, then who are you serving? Uh, it, it is so 
interesting how people do not recognize the fact that there are so many modern day idols that can compete compete with our service to God and to Jesus. So when we say we are Christians and we never have time to invest to spend time reading the Word of God or um, being with fellow believers praying for other people then we couldn't really claim that we are true disciples or true believers. So how different it is to be a servant of Christ than of the world? It says that um, when you follow Jesus, your, your burden is not heavy because He doesn't enslave you to do things for Him. He just wants you to love Him first and then you can love others as you love yourself. So it is not by works that we earn salvation. It is by uh, bringing the will of God into here on earth. Like That's what it means to say, uh, let thy kingdom come. So in other words, if you bring about a truth that only comes from God's word, it's not relative as the world says, then you are a servant of Christ. And it's very different if you're a servant of the world because a servant of the world, if Christ is, Christ is eternal, Christ is, um, is forever, he's the Alpha, he's the Omega. And like if you are serving a man or if you're serving the lusts of the world and the lusts of your flesh, it's not going to last. Christ is everlasting. So if we serve an everlasting God, we will have an everlasting life. If you serve the world, it will perish. If you serve a man, it will also perish and it will be infall it will be and it will be not perfect. Only God is perfect. So I encourage you to look into your life as a believer. Are you serving Christ? Or are you serving yourself? Because the Bible says you cannot serve two masters. You either serve God or the world. You either serve love or money. So there is no in between. And um, we have to be able to choose a life that is sanctified because we are believers. He expects us to follow Him, carry our cross, and preach the good news. Thanks for watching. I hope you check my website at ilmaarts.com for artworks and photographs. I'm a painter and photographer as well. So I encourage you to subscribe to this channel so I could make more videos to bring the good news to the world.